Aloha and welcome to episode 15 where we continue working on the deck panels. Last episode we left off we had just fiberglassed the one side of the first panel and here it is all set up and ready to go. Three layers of 1708 and one layer of chopped strand on each side and of course using the black dye and we're ready to go. And here's the first panel trimmed and sanded and dry fit in place. As the panels come out, they're all going to be leveled out. The pontoons have a nice curve to them, so the challenge is gonna to be to level these out. And here you can see the foam core sandwich that makes this so strong. Each one of these panels has to be made separately because the pontoons are a little bit uneven, so each shape is gonna be its own unique piece. There is a gap between the deck panels and the cross supports and the pontoons themselves. As the deck panels are put together, they will be lifted to level them off and the gap between that and the supports will increase. There will be a lot of peanut butter, fiberglass material, as well as fiberglass used to bridge this gap and you'll see that in later episodes. The three quarter inch Divinacell foam gets three layers of 1708. That's the roll on the bottom there. 1708 has chop strand on one side and woven roven on the other. It's a very thick, very strong fiberglass material. So anyways, each side of this panel gets three layers of that, as well as a layer of chop strand, and that's the material that's on the upper roll. With the second panel finished, you can get an even better idea of how the boat's gonna look. Now that the second panel's ready, time for a little bit of a strength test, as well as a flex test. I've got my son here, who's about 180 pounds, and he's walking around on the boat and kind of bouncing up and down on his toes to see where the panels are flex. We've got cross supports that go left to right across the pontoons, and as we fiberglass this all together, um, we'll attain a bit more rigidity. The panels will be fiberglass to themselves, as well as to the pontoons and the cross supports underneath. I'm looking at running another cross support that will run up the length of the boat right down the very middle and that'll probably provide a little bit more panel stability as well. So in other words, at this point, I'm comfortable with the strength of the panels. I just don't want them to flex at all. And so a little more work will go into that. Okay, let's get the third panel going. The first thing we gotta do is fill up our tray with resin and get a fresh roller. By the time I'm done with the panel, the roller has stuck to the frame. When doing foam core construction, the very first layer of layup is incredibly important. It's important to put down enough resin to fill in all the pores of the foam as well as create a surface of it on top. The very first layer that goes over the Divinacell foam is going to take more resin than the subsequent layers. It's important when you're applying this first layer to really work the resin into the fabric and then also to work that resonated fabric into the foam. You want to make sure that you get excellent adherence for the first layer. A little extra resin will help to get the fiberglass material to meld into the surface of the foam and get excellent adhesion. At just 13 years old, this boy has gained some mad fiberglassing skill. Here he is laying up a layer of 1708. This material is two layers thick and eats up a lot of resin. We have found that the paintbrush rollers are great for this application because you can load a lot of resin into them and they work really good at ironing out any air bubbles that might come up during the application. We're using polyester laminating resin and it actually absorbs into the 1708 material kind of like a sponge. So the first pass that we do is just to get a good thick layer of the resin in there and then it can take its effect and seep into the material. After that pass has had a few moments to soak it up and get through the layers, we then take another pass saturating with even more resin and that's where we begin to really get the adherence that we're looking for. I add black colorant to the resin for the last two layers as this will provide some protection from the sun's UV rays until we finish the boat and paint it. Now that the third panel is finished, we're ready to get started on the fourth. We're already getting started on the final panel. So first we take our sheet of Divinacell 
and roughly fit it onto the boat. I make sure that this edge is lined up with the very edge of the pontoon. That way the piece that I cut off will be as large as possible over here on this side. This process is pretty simple. We're just going to use a construction pencil and uh, go ahead and mark the bottom here. And then of course, you know, we'll flip it over and make our cuts. But just using the boat itself as a template, it's very easy to do. No need to be super accurate here because there'll still be plenty of sanding and filling and fiberglassing to go to get this all attached to the deck. And at that chance, we'll have an opportunity to go ahead and make everything flush and level and uh, finish the shape off however we want to. Yeah. One of the nice things about this project is that I don't have to have every single detail figured out ahead of time. I've got a solid idea of what I want to do and a lot of these little details I can figure out as we get to that point in the project. Here I'm cutting out the foam, just using utility knife to do it. The first pass scores it about three quarters of the way. The second pass scores that last quarter part and the panel separates real easily. Make sure you get it right because each one of these panels of foam is about $225. These Divinisil H80 panels are commonly used in the marine industry and are preferred because they are a dense closed cell foam. This means that they're not like a household sponge where they can absorb water. Because it's a closed cell foam, any water that gets in will simply pool off. It cannot absorb into the foam. Now it's time to flip the panel over and see how it fits. Shut up and sit down. Now that we are starting the last of the four panels, my mind is starting to think about the next phase of connecting these to the pontoons themselves. As with all the panels, the very first layer of resin that gets laid down on the Divinicel panels has got to be nice and thick. You really want to fill in all the cracks and crevices as well as leave a nice wet layer on top of that that will be used to absorb into the layer of 1708 that you're going to roll out on top of this. After I get that last bit of Divinicel foam covered, I go ahead and put on a nice fresh layer of resin because I really want that next layer of fiberglass that I roll onto to absorb some of that resin. This helps to wet the 1708 from underneath as well as from above. It's a very thirsty fabric after all. Before I start rolling resin, I hand smooth it all out and then it's time to go. As I've mentioned repeatedly, the 1708 material is quite thirsty. The first couple layers that I lay down, I just allow those to absorb into the material. Then I do another couple of rolls and allow that to absorb into the fabric. And then I'll go back and cover the ones that I've just done with another layer of resin. This is an important process because you really want to give the 1708 a chance to absorb the material before you lay down another layer of resin. With all layup, it's not about doing the process, it's about achieving the results. So as you go along, just be careful and watch the material. There's always variances in anything that's manufactured on this scale. As the resin sinks into the 1708 fabric, it dissolves a little bit of styrofoam dust. This styrene, as it disappears, leaves the material transparent and you can see the layers underneath it. As that second layer of resin really starts to soak in, this is when I go back over with the brush and really start working the material, making sure that it is thoroughly pressed into the underlying layer of fabric, as well as getting any air bubbles out or any creases. I also at this point make sure to give some attention to all the edges. Those are the areas that can sometimes lift up or not get the kind of adhesion that you're looking for. So it's important to make sure that you pay special attention to them.
the same process as repeated for the next two layers, you will find that these layers are much easier and will not require as much resin as the first layer does. The same things are still important with each layer of layup. Make sure that you hand smooth out all the material before you get started. Lay down those first layers of resin in systematic columns and allow it to really soak into the 1708. Then come back and put another layer on and let that soak in. And then a little, a little more resin goes on with a wet brush just so you can help to really work things in. It's important to let the resin really saturate through this material because it's extra thick. And of course it does build up the layers of your book quickly and that's why it's preferred. As with every layer, make sure that you don't get tired, stay true to the process, and pay attention to those edges. And as before, I used black resin for the last two layers of fiberglass to help protect it from the sun's UV rays. Ultimately, we will paint the boat with gel coat, but for now I want to make sure that the fiberglass doesn't get degraded. Now it's time to get these panels trimmed up, and for that I'm going to use the Sawzall and the Belt Sander. 